ask people out to lunch, ask people out to coffee, any agents that you know and you look up to, like, learn a little bit more about what you're getting into before you just go take your license up in. We work in the most underqualified profession, so do your homework, because sure, it's easy to get that piece of paper, but it takes a lot more grit in this industry than people realize. Welcome to an episode of Real Estate vs. Technology. I'm your host, Norman Kinsey. Thanks to Liftoff Agent for sponsoring the show. If you haven't done so, like, subscribe, notification bell. And on Fridays, we have new episodes that go live every single week to add massive value to your real estate business. Today, we're going to go to the Bay Area to a agent over at EXP, someone who's on a little island out there. And he's a mommy as well and absolutely crushing it. We're going to get into some technology, going to get into... How can we be more supportive for one another in this crazy industry? And uh, let's go ahead and change the angle here and bring on our guests. Let's do this. We have the only one and only Lauren on the show. Laura. So welcome to Real Estate vs. Laura on the show. <laughs> welcome to Real Estate vs. Tech. It's funny, right before we got started, I was just like, dang it. As soon as I had the pressure on, it's like, and I'm introing, it's like, dang it. Like, all right. Thank you, Dan. Have Appreciate it. you. Got to have the co-host to help you out here. So, uh, <laughs> Let's get into your story. Uh, you know, why real estate? We talked a little bit before we got on air, which was really cool because uh, you uh, you have the paycheck life, and and now you have freedom and have your own business doing your own thing, and you're traveling and crushing it. And I saw you on different uh, different events that you just went to, the the team fast movement stuff going on. I also saw you with uh, the Maverick event that you just went to as well. It looks amazing. So uh, let's get into a little bit of your story. Yeah, so started out in the industry in 2018. I had been a stay-at-home mom for about a year and a half, and I had a girlfriend who's a top producer here um, in the Bay Area, and she's like, hey, I need an assistant. Come work for me about 10 hours a week. So I'm like, okay, I'll get out of the house. Man, this industry moves so fast. I think I was in the office two days a week for five hours at a time and knew nothing about real estate. I liked looking at houses. I liked the pretty magazines you know, design, but I knew nothing about the back end of the business and the lingo and how all of this worked. Um, so yeah. clearly 10 hours a week wasn't enough to be able to keep up with a fast pace, right? <laughs> so we moved into 20 hours, got the kid into preschool, I went full time. Um, and then 2020, January, my boss says, hey, I wanna pay for you to go get your license and become my licensed assistant. Great. So all of Let's a sudden go. COVID hits and all testing right. centers get closed down. And you know the license gets put off for a little while, but thankfully, March 2021, I was able to get licensed um, and moved into taking on more responsibilities with the business, but also started to be a showing agent and a buyer agent, you know, and not only getting that paycheck, but then working with commissions. And that was really nice because I was watching these women bring in these killer paychecks and going like, "Yeah, I'm like, I want a piece of that." Amen. Like, Let's go. That's so, awesome. Dude. Yeah. And you had that transition too. It seemed like you had the paycheck for a while, then got the transition in. So was that an easier transition for anyone listening and viewing and watching? Would, would that be something you would suggest kind of going into getting your license and becoming I think one? the transition, like my, I am so grateful for my um, intro to the industry and being able to learn the back end of the business and see how it operates. You know, it's yeah. so different than these people are like, I like, <laughs> I like watching Selling Sunset. I can do this, right? <laughs> it's not real. Um, yeah. so being able to see like how to build your business, operate on the back end of it. Um, yeah. and then to go full time, you know, 2022, I end of 2022, I decided to leave my team and go full time and say goodbye to the paycheck hey. um, and take that leap of faith and like go solo. And it was Amen. terrifying and exciting Amen. all at the same time. And at this point there's no going back. So awesome good little story like uh, I think a lot of people you know they go interview at brokerages in the traditional route and then somebody's like you got to be full-time in order to join the team and I'm like that's not the best approach like let people get their feet wet let them figure out if this is an industry that they want to be in and also they have lives families kids that need to take care of so yeah I hire time agents all the time I got in that argument with somebody a couple weeks ago <laughs> they were like only hire full-time agents and I was like no this transition and not everybody can sell $2 million homes and just move right into business. So, right. Yeah. 
especially this past year where inventory has been low and like even really like established top producers were struggling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. So, yeah. That's huge. And with Jesse, you know, heat up now too. Yeah. And so you go solo. Now everything's kind of moving in its own speed because now you're in control of everything. Uh, right. You know, what do you like about the business as an individual agent versus, you know, when you were on a team in that structure? Um, I love, I mean, I love entrepreneurship. I think I've always been thrown into careers where I've been an entrepreneur. Like I know it's really funny. One of my first jobs early on was actually at a title plant. Like who knew that that would take me here today, but working in college at a title plant, I learned two things. I learned that I never wanted a nine to five job and that I never wanted to have to sit in an office all day at a desk. Like I am not built for that. So I think this is one of those careers where I get to be up, running around all over the place. Um, I can work remote. I like the flexibility and the freedom. I'm also a mom, so the fact that I can make my own schedule, you know, it's during my baseball practice and I got the laptop out at the picnic table and I'm, you know, taking calls and sending emails like while he's at practice. Like that's great. <laughs> do, you have that, do you have a sticker? I'm a realtor on your laptop. <laughs> I do. You know, I got one of those. Like, come talk to me. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And where Where do you see yourself like uh, as this evolves? I know you said you're in Alameda. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you just kind of touch base with everybody about the Bay Area real estate market? You know, it, a lot of people don't know about it, right? Really? We know, we know Kenny. Yeah. They They think yeah. California. They think LA, or they think San Jose or San Francisco. But here's this like massive. Oakland, people know what Oakland is. Let me, let me be yeah. clear here. Yeah. But they don't understand how many transactions actually happen <laughs> in the, that part of the Bay Area. And mm. um, I think it was somebody I was talking to a couple weeks ago that said that there's more transactions in Oakland, Oakland to Concord, Walnut Creek than there actually is in San Jose up to San Francisco. Wow. wow. More trading. Yeah. So just wanted to like let everybody know kind of where you're at if they're watching this. Use you as a yeah. referral partner that. Yeah. Yeah. So I live in Alameda, but cut my teeth in Oakland, predominantly the Oakland Hills, Montclair, Upper Rockridge, um, Berkeley areas. And yeah, it is a strong seller's market still. Um, wow. Houses are going quickly. And now I've actually started working more East Castro Valley area. I have a new mm. team that I joined there, John and Leslie Foster Real Estate Group. Um, so Castro Valley market, like you're looking at inventory and it's gone within five days. Wow. Like, it is turning and burning over there. Yeah. Um, so it's been exciting and it's one of those really to help our buyer end mm -hmm. to buy side, just like being able to leverage our off markets. Like thankfully I'm with a really top producing team where we have a lot of signed listings coming soon mm -hmm. and being able to have access to that, um, and guide our buyers and get them get them in without having to go into the bidding war because we had a house the other day that had 21 offers. Like, wow. It feels a little bit like the COVID days again. Right. Holy cow. I yeah. just, I just helped my brother-in-law buy down there and it was amazing that like the sell, I told him like, when you go to negotiate, I was like, the seller is not going to give you basically anything. I was like, you're going to have very little wiggle room, have your inspection done, get it done quickly. Mm -hmm. We ended up getting it. We ended up actually making a pretty good concession on the inspections. It wasn't anything crazy. There was a roof that needed to be done. Mm. But it was amazing because the seller, the seller's response was, uh, I'll do this, but don't ask me for anything else because I'll just put it right back on the market and get four more offers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's they can do it. I will see that. I will see that in disclosure packages. It's like the house is what it is. Do not ask for concessions. <laughs> like we're not going to do anything. So... <laughs> And I wow. think a lot of people don't understand that about the Bay Area real estate market. You know, me and Norm have mm -hmm. been working in that area for a long time. And, um, it hasn't slowed down. Mm -hmm. It slowed down, but it just never has stopped being a seller's market where, where I'm at. Yeah. Like, it really depends on what price point you're at. Mm -hmm. Right? So Same thing here in Arizona. Yeah. I feel like we hit a, a little, like, Q4 last year. It slowed down and it got a little bit scary, you know, when interest rates went up to 8%. And... One of my listings, it was like the first offer that came in. It was like so low balled. Wow. I'm like, wow. It felt like it switched overnight. Um, 
you know, but now the interest rates came down a little bit. So we're right back in that strong seller's market. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. So curious going from kind of Bay Area market, you know, what kind of market is in the Bay Area? Of course, links are down below. Give her a follow. But let's get into like tech, tech stack, what you're using, CRM organization. What are you doing with that process to keep yourself moving forward, keep yourself organized? Yeah. So this is actually a funny story, too, because I came from Compass, right? And my team okay. as Compass... Compass got up to speed. We were able to take all of our systems and move them over to the Compass platform. So I mm. learned how to operate my entire business out of this one, this one app and this one little box, right? It was yeah. great. So then leaving that and going like, oh my God, like I need a real scout and I need, at that time my team was using Chime, um, all the different platforms that I needed to have to run my business. And I'm like, is this what regular agents do? Like you guys have done this whole time. I was so ignorant to it. I'm like, wow. Um, but thank God I have had follow up boss come into my life. That's and I am such a huge fan. Um, cause I need all the help in the world with like the automations and the follow up. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, there's a lot, right. And all the stuff that agents can keep in the back of their mind and try to remember and or write down and notes is like everything could just be in a CRM system, go to the name, look at the notes, look at what's going on. We actually had Dan uh, on the show, Dan Corcoran, thanks to our co-host Dan. We had, uh, the CEO follow boss, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, check them out for the viewers and listeners out there. Are you, um, in terms of lead generation, is the team providing most of the, the lead generation opportunities? Or are you running your own set of, you know, micro stack of lead gen? Right, so it's, it's a combination of both. So I came from a team that was established where we had a really nice um, sphere that we were nurturing and then we had a lot of referrals and we would also do farming. So I was able to take that, like I still have my own sphere and I do farming in the area where I grew up and I've gotten a couple listings from that, so that's been nice. Um, I like doing neighborhood events for people. I partner with a lender, Sean Herrero, shout out to him. Let's go. Um, so it's great to just, I like, I'm a relationship person. I hate cold calling. That is one thing too. <laughs> I noticed like when I left my team, I was like, I've never had to door knock or cold call in my life. Like, what is this? You know? And then going yeah. into 2023, that was like everybody's formula, right? Um, so now I've partnered with John and Leslie Foster Real Estate Group, and we actually are on Zillow Flex for the buy side and the sell side. So uh, I now have learned how to work with Zillow Flex. We've partnered with them, and that's a whole animal in its own. Um, you need follow bus. <laughs> You have to. Yeah, I couldn't do it without follow up boss, but it's exciting and it's um, it's fun because you never so, know what's going to be on the other end of that line, you know, coming through. Like I got my first mobile home call. Like, really? I've never sold a mobile home, but guess what? I'm going to go figure out how to do it and I'm going to help this person. I know all about them. Just go. Me yeah. A yeah. <laughs> Great. I, I will. I've flipped a few myself, too. Okay. <laughs> I Funny that you bring this up because I, I like to go on a little bit of side tangents here. So yesterday I was on a phone call with somebody and uh, you know I call myself an equal opportunity agent. I don't care if I'm selling or buying a mobile home or a $5 million farm, whatever it is. But um, I told somebody, I said, manufactured homes are actually one of the most complicated transactions that you could possibly do. They're extremely low commission. So you either want to really help people or you're going to get a bunch of agents that don't want to deal with you. Mm -hmm. and, it's because there's a property management aspect of park approval right. combined with a sale and there's a bunch of contingencies, but also when you add financing on top, if it's pre HUD versus post HUD, it has all of these different parameters that you need to understand. And the guy was just like, I'm so glad I called you <laughs> because I, he's like, I literally reached out to five, six, seven agents and they like, just never called me back. Yeah. So there's just a little bit of tip to anybody out there. not saying that you need to just market to mobile homes, but, help people because mm -hmm. to see it like a trend in the industry where people are like, Oh, the commission's so low. I'm not going to touch it. I don't like that. So, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, it's definitely a process for sure. And I'm curious going into follow boss and the leads that you're getting in. Um, what does that look like for you as far as like the follow up procedure and process and like how many, like break it down? Like how many touches is it like the first call they're ready to go sign here? Or is it like, four or five, six calls, building the relation, because they don't know and like and trust you. Like that's the thing I think that like, is a different subject matter in passive prospecting, social media, YouTube content, where someone's like, all right, I already want to work with Lauren. Like this is, all right, Laura, this is already what I want to do, compared to, you know, 
picking up the phone, talking to someone with that program. So what does it look like? Kind of give us an idea for the viewers and listeners that want to join a team and potentially have that opportunity with Zillaflex. Yeah, so in that first initial phone call, the motivation is to book that appointment, right? Let's get face-to-face mm-hmm, -face mm -hmm. so that we can. ALM. ALM. Yeah. You do the ALM. But it's like, let's get face-to-face -face so that I can build that relationship and I can focus on your pain points and build that rapport, get that connection. You yes. know, get them, hey, let's look at the house and after like, let's sit down to coffee and like go over the buying process. You okay, know? okay, got it. And then it's a lot of nurturing so far, you know, that's newer too. I joined this team in January. So this is just, I've been through Q1 of it. Mm. Um, so it's still newer, but yeah, it's a lot of nurturing. And you know, if after, if they don't want to write on that first house, you know, it usually takes what, seven or eight houses to see before somebody wants to make an offer. Yeah. So it's a little bit aggressive. It's like calling them seven days in a row, trying to check in and get a hold of them and, and a lot of texting and where are you at? What's going on? How's lunch? But, <laughs> yep. Yep. But there are people on my team that are just badasses and have been really successful with closing transactions. So, so I see that it works. Yeah, it, it works. I got a, a $70,000 a month happening right now because of Zillow. Nice. And in my market, that's a lot. That's like a ton of transactions. But um, I wanted to touch on that really quick is that like that touch point, right? I teach my agents on my team an eight touch, eight day. Basically, it's like call, call, text, email, call. You know, we're doing eight touches, eight days. Some days it might be a triple threat of call, text, email, but in the end of it, there's eight touches, eight days, and then we switch them to a nurture sequence, which is basically a call every like seven to 10 days, which is three touches a month, and then it switches to uh, month, once a month, then it switches to quarterly, then biannually, then annually. And like, so what I wanted to share about Zillow Leads is make sure you understand your drip sequence and what you're following up because what I've seen, this is like a, this is an observation I've made over the last three years studying and spending a ton of money on Zillow, is that a lot of your transactions, if you don't, first off, if you don't stay in Zillow long enough, you'll never get the ROI. Number two is once you've got through your eight touches or seven touches, seven days, make sure you have a killer drip. Mm. That was missing from my business for so long. I ended up paying this guy $1,000 to go through my CRM and create drip campaigns for everything, but lead specific for Zillow. Mm -hmm. Then those started to kick in about three months ago. I've closed four transactions because people were like, yeah, interest rates when I originally called sucked. So I was just avoiding agents. But now I'm getting people, literally I'll go to a showing, I've never met this person, have no clue. It just says tag Zillow. They want to go see a house and it's like they know me. They're like, oh, Dan, thanks for meeting us out here. I'm like, how are these people? Yeah. So uh, I just wanted I to it. share that with everybody because you spend all this money on lead gen, you call them and do all the hustle to get them, but then like your nurture back end sequence is just miserable. So follow up, boss, follow up, boss. I digress. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. So now you're. Do what you're doing, been in the business, off the paycheck. Now you're crushing it on the team, doing the Zillow Flex thing. Um, speaking of tech, social, that type of stuff, how do you leverage like social or YouTube or videos like in your repertoire? Do you do you follow these leads on social media and then like DM them or see what they're up to, or do you keep that separate? How do you how do you operate with social and do all that? So that was one of those like with my old team, I used to manage the social. So when it came to managing my own social, I was burnt out and didn't want oh to touch God. it. Oh my God, I can imagine. So yeah. Now, so now it's like what this past year, I think like end of twenty twenty one, I think I might have had like two hundred followers. So. I think being around like Kenny and Raquel and like leveraging social and just posting and creating content and, you know, just getting over myself and being shy and just, you know, get out there, get your face out there. But yes. I've kind of pigeonholed myself because I have a lot of um, agent followers, not necessarily client followers. So ah. riches in the niches, just go, just go niche heavy. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, Liftoff Agent can help you with partnership for the agents that follow you. No, so much for pro clients. Like, great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for other side. I, uh, I remember when Kenny first started, because me and Norm have known him forever. Mm -hmm. is, he was posting like fifty stories a day. And he's still up there. He's still up there. But, he did a hundred uh, the other day when we were in Tennessee. 
Oh my god. <laughs> I just had to stop clicking on it after a while. But yeah, uh, just great great dude to follow if you're if you're in in that neck of the woods. Yeah. He he's been on twice already in the podcast, so definitely go go check him out. So Okay, I want to talk about something on your social media, something that you did that was really cool is a calendar. And talk a little bit about the calendar. You like calendared like your whole entire year, did you not? Yeah. And like how did that kind of work and how does that work for you? And have, has it been working for you for anyone out there that might want to like get that structure with their business to calendar, calendar out the whole year? It's been great. So it's uh, Jesse Itzler. It's his big ass calendar. And yeah. It, you know, started coming into my IG feed last year and finally decided to pull the trigger because I'm also a very visual person. Like I want mm -hmm. to see the goals in front of my face, not just in my computer. Yeah. Um, so to be able to like really sit down, like I knew my conferences that I wanted to hit, you know, you know, the kids, I have a son. So it's like, I know what his vacations are going to be like, just build out the year. I'm also, you know, it's really easy to plan out like the month, right. Or the quarter, mm -hmm. but the whole year I was like, let's do this. Let's see if this works. So it's been great to see the visual. Um, and then put in, like I was telling Norman earlier, I'm also putting in my work tasks. So it's like, I'm putting in all my open houses and all of my showings in that calendar as well. So I can see like the needle movers for my business and how much time that I'm spending in my business mm. as well as, as well as like the quality time with family, um, and the adventures, like the things that make yep. you excited. Right. And like the part of why we're doing what we do and to, to be able to celebrate those wins. Cause mm -hmm. we work really hard. Like we deserve, we deserve to take some time for ourselves and enjoy it. Yes. Gotta have those vacations. Gotta have those times off. I can imagine looking at the calendar. You're like, all right, shit. I got, I got this event for my kids. And I got this. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Event. It's like, next week is spring break. So it's like, I know it's going to be really hard to get as much done as I want to get done. So like this week it's like, all right, we're head down. We're grinding this week. And like, you're going to prepare. Yeah, and if you don't put it on your calendar, it will get booked over. Like, yes, I have mm -hmm. tried to, I've tried to keep my Saturdays and Sundays free for the last three three months straight. And every <laughs> Saturday, there's there's a 10 a.m. meeting, and then there's a three o'clock on Sunday, and I, it's like, why didn't I just block it out? I sent my Calendly link out. Somebody booked it. I'm an yeah. idiot. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah you're 100 percent correct. Like. Make sure you live and die by that calendar. That's you super. have to. Like if it's yes. not a calendar, it doesn't exist for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, Preach that, viewers and listeners out there. Listen up. Like, yeah. there's so many agents that don't do that. They don't live and die by their calendars, or even on the list off agent side, like they don't show up to meetings or what have you. And it's just like, was it not? On your, they don't check it off. You know, anyone out there? Like, you get a calendar invite, check it off. Yes. So then it goes on your calendar, and doesn't matter what system you use. Yes. Yeah. It sends you a text. It sends you all the reminders. You don't have to do anything, but so many people are just like, ah, kind of like whatever. I'm so OCD, so it's like, yeah, it's a pet peeve of mine, and people don't. Like, Me too. When you're not organized. Like, how do you we function have, in this industry? And yeah. I, I think we should touch on this real quick. The transaction management timeline of having inspection deadlines and mm. save my ass. Earnest money yes. deposits, like everything is on there. I don't have to push yes. It's just still there. It's floating, right? Yep. And I think those roadblocks is what every real estate agent needs is because once you get to that more than two transactions a month, it is very, very hard to keep in sequence. And if you don't have a TC, like you need to be like on that calendar, everything, showings, free time, all of that. And I think that's been, I uh, just wanna say this last thing. Every time I talk to a real estate agent that I'm gonna either recruit or they're coming to real broker or something along those lines, and I ask them what the production is. I ask them, hey, like we're on a Zoom right now or at Google. Let me see your calendar. Mm. That's the first thing I do. So intimate. Ooh. Just, get, just <laughs> open that hood up. You see. Calendar, and I know why. They only do one to two deals. They're disorganized. Mm. There's no prospecting time. There's no Friday follow up to past clients. There's no Tuesday transaction follow up to all your deals that you have in contract. There's no roadblocks for transaction deadlines. There's no family time on there. There's no exercise time in there. There's nothing. You are a blank slate with no directive. Yeah. And I think that's super Amen. important. That shares a lot about you is making sure that if I was a client, buyer, seller, investor, and I was like, hey, I'm going to interview four agents, but Laura tells me she's the most organized. Who do you think I'm going to hire? Laura. Laura. 
I hope so. So <laughs> I want to share. Yes, please. People, agents don't understand that that is client perception as well. Yeah. It's super important. That's true. That's true. So for the viewers and listeners out there, go follow Laura and go check her out on social media. Get she's already at, she already has 1,800 followers. You said only 200 back when you, whatever, what, you said the date, and now I'm you're like at- Just over a year, yeah. That's awesome, 1,800 now. So what, for viewers and listeners, get you back on the show, of course, Let's talk next 12 months. You know, you're organized, you know what you wanna do. You wanna kick ass and take names. So tell us, what, what does it look like? What is your vision? Your hairy, big, hairy, audacious goal for the next 12 months. What what can we look out for? So if anyone wants to get motivation, inspiration, you might get some more agents following you after this podcast. Sorry. That's totally fine. I love agents. I love agent connection. So boom, you just got another follower. Yeah. (laughs) Love it. Um, Big goals this year, 24 transactions. Nice. And I'd like to get into agent attraction. Ooh. You know, I really love my team in Castro Valley. I love EXP has been really good to me. Um, so if anybody's open to talking, like let's get together, let's have coffee and talk. Boom. Yeah. I love that. Short yeah. and sweet. <laughs> and it's you simple. like John Chemplack, so I'm, I like you. All right. Oh, I love getting my ass kicked <laughs> by him. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. He's, he's hilarious. He is he hilarious. Is. You gotta he's love a teddy bear. <laughs> yeah. It looks hard, but really, give me a hug. Yeah. Yep. That's so good. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. Appreciate you having guys taking time out of your busy day, your busy calendar, your busy schedule to get real estate versus tech going. Yeah. We talked about this. I was in the car with uh, Kenny in California, like, I don't know, a month and a half ago or whatever else. And you were on the phone with them. It's like, got to get on the podcast. And (laughs) And here you are. So we do appreciate your time. And as we close out the show, is there anything last maybe piece of advice wisdom for any agents out there that want to get their stuff in the business so they're going to join a team or maybe get licensed what would you want to leave leave our t- our guests with today's episode on for you guys do your homework do mm. your homework ask people out to lunch ask people out to coffee any agents that you know and you look up to like learn a little bit more about what you're getting into before you just go take your license jump in. We work in the most underqualified profession. So <laughs> it's embarrassing to say, right? That's the best way to say it. It's yeah. Like, so do your homework. Cause sure it's easy to get that piece of paper, but it takes a lot more grit in this industry than people realize. Amen. Well, Laura, we could tell you're going to have massive success. You know, even though you're new in the business, time doesn't matter. You're around the right people, the right mindset from the calendar to the organization to Zillow Flex program. And now crushing it on social media, like congratulations. Thanks for being on the show. Let's we'll have, have you back on to see how your agent attraction is doing and also those 24 transactions as we'd yeah. like to have our guests to come back on. And the goal is just to add value to this industry, right? And just Definitely. keep pouring into it. So thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Of course. Dan, thanks so much for co-hosting. Thank you, guys. Breath of fresh air. Yes. And thanks to all our viewers and listeners for uh, putting up with my wrong wordage, (laughs) pronunciation of words. Words are hard. Words are hard. And uh, that's a whole other story. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thanks, Liftoff Agent, for sponsoring the show. And it is our intention for you to take things from our episode. Apply your business and have more massive success. We'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.